United States Senator Rand Paul spoke at Howard University yesterday in an attempt to show that the Republican Party is not the party of old white dudes. Yeah, Howard University, historically black college, the Republican Party facing the challenge in the age of Obama of how to win over young black voters. And while Ron Paul had a uh, doctor, Congressman Ron Paul, had an incredible way of communicating the message of liberty based on philosophical grounding that won people over from across the political spectrum. Rand Paul seems to have taken a different approach, one that is guaranteed to fail in terms of winning people over. But what he may be able to do is capture a considerable existing demographic. This is the difference between a messenger and a politician. And what we saw at Howard University yesterday was the sad failings, not of an educator, not of someone reaching out on principle to say we can make your lives better, but a politician. Good afternoon, Senator. My name is Keenan Glover. I'm an administration of justice major from Rochester, New York. Okay. A freshman as well. Um, you say you want to provide a government uh, that leaves us alone. Quite frankly, I don't want that. I want a government that is going to help me. I want a government that will help me fund my college education. I want a government that won't define me by my FAFSA nor by my family's income. I'm a dollar sign with a heartbeat in this nation. This society is mirrored image of Capitol Hill. Do you, Senator Rand Paul, have a formulated solution to come up with new American values so that the citizens of this nation have a worth of more than dead presidents and Ben Franklin? First, let me address the, the, the circumstances of this question. Rand Paul, Howard University, black freshman, right? I don't want a government that leaves us alone. Now, this is the problem with Rand's rhetoric, because when he says, I want a government that leaves you alone, he's not actually saying, he's not actually meaning that. Uh, it, it, when Ron Paul said that, he meant it. He said, yeah, I want, I want voluntarism. I want a, a government that is non-coercive or doesn't impose its will on others by force. We want to respect your rights as an individual. Rand Paul says, we want a government that leaves you alone, with an asterisk and a disclaimer, sort of, not really. Well, you still have to pay taxes for foreign aid to Israel and national defense. And we're going to have all these other programs that the conservatives love that we can't give up because I'm, I'm a politician. I'm trying to, to get a wide swath of the, the demographics here. I'm not trying, not trying to win on principle or win people over. And he says, I, I want a government that's going to help me. And this is, this is really important for uh, understanding where this country is right now in re its relationship with government. What do people want out of government? Well, uh, if they don't understand it, it's just this entity that exists in society that we need that is never challenged as to its necessity. It's going to be there whether we like it or not, which isn't true. But if, if it's going to have a role in our lives, shouldn't it be a good one? Shouldn't it be providing for us? It shouldn't be leaving us alone. The world should be taking care of us. And if the government's an important part of that, well then, yeah, why not? And he has to tug on the heartstrings. And this is a very well-worded, very well-thought-out question. He's reading off his cell phone. He clearly wrote this out in advance. And he says, I, I want a government that won't define me by my FAFSA or my family's income. Well... If the government is going to help you, <laughs> it's going to define you by that. And a lot of people, a lot of uh, young, poor people, whether they're black or not in this country, feel disadvantaged. And, and a, a dollar sign with a heartbeat. I mean, oh, you could write a poem of that line. A dollar sign with, with a heartbeat. Yeah, that's, that's how, you, when, when you see the government analyzing you through the framework of the Federal Reserve System, of the, the dollar-based economy as opposed to the free market, then, yeah, oftentimes that's what you're portrayed as or what you're seen as by people that don't care about you as a human being. But if we had a free market, you'd be a heartbeat with a dollar sign, not a dollar sign with a heartbeat. And the objective would be to get your dollars, to get your value by providing you with value, by creating more value for you. And what was Senator Rand Paul's answer to this when, when, when he was asked, do you have a solution to come up with new American values? And while his father would say, no, th these are the old American values. These are the values of Thomas Jefferson, of George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, of Thomas Paine, of Patrick Henry. When faced with the call for new values, that would be a hearkening back to those founding principles of liberty, of individual rights. Instead, this is Rand's answer. 
I think what I would say when we go back to the, the that I want a government that leaves you alone, the main reason I say that, and we can disagree, but probably we're going to end up disagreeing. We're probably going to end up disagreeing. See, this is the problem with being a conservative as opposed to being a libertarian. When you're a libertarian, you have confidence that your position is based on factual analysis, rational analysis. It's not that we're going to agree or disagree. It's a matter of simple fact that human beings are better off when our relationships are free of force, fraud, and coercion, especially the kind that is institutionalized in government. But what I would say is <laughs> that uh, the reason I say leaves me alone is the gentleman just stood up and people gave him a hard time, and probably most people here are not followers of Louis Farrakhan. But in America, you can live and be a follower of Louis Farrakhan if we leave you alone, and we ought to. So he's just going to give up on, on trying to spread the truth. He's going to say, we're going to agree to disagree and, and, and sort of walk away and say, well, we can leave you alone with, it, with, with the First Amendment, with the Constitution. Yes, it'll protect your, your right to, to be a supporter of Louis Farrakhan. Now, can you act on those beliefs? No, of course not. This is America. And so we don't have to all agree on every issue. So, uh, you know, I think there are a lot of issues where we are all going to not agree on. But if we have a government that doesn't get involved in every issue, a government that kind of leaves you alone, doesn't mean no government. See, he says kind of leaves you alone. It kind of keeps you economically disadvantaged because we still have to pay for all of my government programs that I like. It, it kind of wants to leave you alone in terms of, of, of ripping you off through the regressive uh, inflation tax. It kind of leaves you alone, but uh, not really. It's just basically going to take care of you less yeah we're like we want there to be a government but it, it, it should just um instead of taking care of you the way you know you want to be taken care of i mean you want a government that takes care of you that that is uh going to help you that is going to fund your college education as 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 you said uh keenan glover you know Rand paul says no, no no we want a government that's only going to help you with uh with with uh things like with drugs like we want it to, to keep certain drugs illegal uh we want a government that's going to help you with national defense which backfires every time we want a government that's just going to help you with uh with the essential things that, that that government you know has to screw up doesn't mean government's not involved in education for example one of the things i often say is it's not that i believe in no government I believe in a government that spends what comes in. And that's not that unreasonable. We bring in $2.6 trillion a year in money, but we're spending $3.8 trillion. So even though I think your education is important and maybe you have a student loan from the government, I'm not for borrowing it from China. I'm for figuring out how we get it out of the $2.6 trillion that comes in every year because I think if we borrow it from China, we're going to give you a student loan, you're going to graduate from Howard, and you're going to have $60,000 in debt, and then you got no job. See, this is the problem with statists. This is why Ron Paul was different as a politician or as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a human being, that he wasn't a politician while holding public office. And, and that when, when you have someone like Rand Paul saying, well, your education is important, I just don't want to borrow money from China to, to, to take care of it. Um, so, so he's like Obama and saying that, yeah, government should provide certain benefits, government should provide certain services and education, but Obama's just really good at it. He's going to borrow money from China. He's going to really take care of you. I'm just going to do that in a fiscally responsible way. But, you know, what do you care? You're not responsible for the, the fiscal state of your government anyways. So th th this is a, a horrible pitch. And it's, it's as, as we can see from the reaction from, from the left to Rand's speech and from Howard University students, uh, it's, it's not going to work because we borrowed so much money from China that we're ruining the economy. So it is beyond, we have to think beyond sometimes the immediate effects of, yeah, I want my student loan. And I'm not saying I'm against the student loans. I'm saying we have to be careful that if we give everybody in the country unlimited student loans and everybody goes to college, and that we become, the country becomes so indebted that there are no jobs, have we done you a service? So everything is a, it's a balancing act of trying to figure it out. And you and I may not completely agree, but I think leave me alone it is a good mantra for government because government has to be involved in certain things, but there are many things we can leave government out of. So Rand Paul is being held up as the new libertarian standard bearer. And it's funny how he can be called that by the mainstream media because they want to see someone like Rand as libertarian. They, they want libertarianism to be defined by a conservative as opposed to a libertarian. So he seems to be running away from the message that, that got him elected in the first place, although he never used this message when he was running for U.S. Senate from Kentucky. He just 
took advantage of his father's coattails and and wrote uh, uh, on, in on the assumption of a lot of people who were duped by Rand Paul into thinking he was uh, a real libertarian. But as the mainstream goes, oh yes, we can we can hold up Rand Paul. He's he's a libertarian, he, and this is this is why lefties love blowing up Rand Paul. The left is going to blow him up until 2016 because they want him to define libertarianism. They didn't they ignored his father. They ignored Dr. Ron Paul, but Dr. Rand Paul, no no no, we can use him as a punching bag. We can blow him up because he's not really a libertarian. But if we call him libertarian and convince people that that's libertarianism, then nobody's going to be converted. Nobody's going to wake up. Nobody's going to actually like convert. They're not going to lose any statists to libertarianism if they hold up Rand Paul. And that's kind of the the danger of of being uh, of supporting him because it's a trap. He's, he's walking like right into a trap. Now, he's able to bring a lot of attention to himself. He's able to gain significant power. He's able to do what he as a conservative sees are, are, are good things in the Senate. And I think it's great that he is capitalizing on his father's work. That his father woke a lot of people up, not just to the message, but to issues too. And on those issues, he's kind of bringing, you know, building a coalition around those issues. But he's never going to win people over from the left or from the center or from conservatism even to libertarianism when he's not actually talking from that perspective and he's not advocating for liberty. Now, one of the things that you know, you would say if you were a libertarian and answering this question isn't, well, we should have government be uh, less borrowing and spending and 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 be just a little less helpful with your education the answer is there is nothing in your needs or your desires that justifies using the force of government to take it from others it's as simple as that you want education i want a toilet seat made out of solid gold neither one justifies me going to government and saying look you have all the guns point them at the taxpayers and take more money for them so that i should have them and then you can examine all of the, the, the consequences, all the negative externalities, all of the potential complications and unintended consequences from accepting this institutionalization of force and redistributed wealth that comes from government programs. Now, some would point out that Rand Paul could evolve. He could become more like his father over time. He could become more philosophically grounded and would point out that over time, Ron Paul in a sense, became more philosophically consistent. But I can't put any stock in that when he's running in the opposite direction. And what he's doing is actually posing a great liability to libertarianism, because in order to walk this path, you have to contradict yourself. I mean, that's inherent in the, in the nature of statism, of course, to say that somehow organized coercion is, is appropriate or productive for humanity. But he can't even keep his story straight. And some supporters of, of Rand Paul who are libertarians are saying, oh, no, no, he's a closet libertarian who's playing the game. Well, this is from Mediate.com. Maddow tears into Rand Paul for denying he questioned Civil Rights Act. You did question it on my show. Remember when Rachel Maddow interviewed then-Senate candidate Rand Paul in 2010 over whether he supported the Civil Rights Act? It was one of the first times Paul got national media attention since he admitted to having some serious issues with the landmark legislation. So it was with some shock that Maddow reacted to Paul's claim during an event at Howard University today that he never came out in opposition to the Civil Rights Act. Yeah. And when he was on the Rachel Maddow show, he was saying that it was a bad idea, the Civil Rights Act. And I agree with... Rand Paul the, uh, on, on Maddow, not Rand Paul at Howard. But when Rand Paul was on Maddow, he was running for Senate. He was running a Republican primary. thought he could just, he, he'll, he'll just give his dad's answers, right? Oh yeah, Civil Rights Act, that's bad. It's government f forcing a solution to racism, it's bad. And, and he gave the answer without understanding it. And he gave a mealy mouth attempt at, at, at the case that his father would make for civil rights, which is, hey, look, uh, racism is evil, Collecti because it's a form of collectivism. And the last thing you should be doing is having more collectivism to confront that collectivism. The, the, the last thing you should be doing is saying that we're going to use, we're going to force people to not be racist. Because look at the consequences. Then you have Jim Crow laws. Then, then you get lynchings. Then you get all these other disastrous underground effects of, of, of racism that, that are still there because it's in the paradigm, but not in the law. And so what Rand Paul is doing is, uh, you know, he's, he's not... He's not spreading the message of liberty.
Like that's that's why he'll never have the support of those of us who are hardcore supporters of his father. He's speaking from a different perspective. He's pursuing a losing strategy. And just like all of the great conservative icons that have come up in the Republican Party, we've seen what their purpose has been in the bigger political system, in the bigger political scheme. They have been convenient tools, punching bags, controlled opposition. And Rand Paul, by being the politician as opposed to being the messenger, being true to his philosophy, is playing right into the hands of the left and allowing them to define libertarianism not as the beautiful message of individual liberty that is universal, that is the fundamental truth that can unite humanity, that was the power of his father's message, but instead is confusing it with mealy-mouthed conservatism, which might be true to what Rand really is. And I think at this point he's made it clear that from, you know, from the filibuster when, when he in, engaged in the political grandstanding and, and was trying to build this coalition, was trying to, to win people over, that he's forced to talk out of both sides of his mouth and can't be consistently true to the principles of liberty. And when, once you've given up on the message and lost confidence in this, this beautiful idea, of voluntarism, of libertarianism, you've already lost. Voluntary means no coercion. So if you want to change people's habits or change the world, you should do it by setting... Uh, we sure could use a lot of help here. Quite often for legal bullying and for expropriation of property, as in this case.